Excuse me, is this the meeting for T-Rex Roars Anonymous? You too, huh? Hello everyone, welcome to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. We have got yet another review coming for you today, and we are very excited about it because it is going to put an end to one of the types of dinosaur toys that we can review for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, uh, at least until Series 2 or Wave 2 hits the shelves sometime mid-June, I believe. But uh, without further ado, let's bring in today's figure, shall we? It is none other than this, the Roarivore Allosaurus. This is the last Roarivore that we will be taking a look at on our channel until Wave 2. Um, and the reason we saved this one for last, no, not because it was the best, it is actually our least favorite of the Roarivore line from series, or yeah, series one. Um, and, um, you know, that's why we, we took the longest to get this one. We just did not have any interest in uh, picking it up uh, because it was definitely not a standout to us. Uh, which is weird because it seems to be a fan favorite. Um, but we're going to take a closer look at it for you today. We're going to take a look at the box and maybe talk about, once we uh, bust it out, a few of the things that make it not our personal top pick. So without further ado, let's do this. So if we take a look at the packaging art, it's really the same thing we've seen before. You got the Jurassic World logo nice and cracked up, the bars of the cage keeping the theme of removing the dinosaurs from the island, Owen in blue down in the bottom left corner, three plus years warning, this Allosaurus is part of the Roarivore lineup, and the bottom right features a diagram of the action gimmick that this dinosaur offers. Now if we move up the side, you've got the lovely art of, um, the forest of Isla Nublar silhouetted against the eruption of Mount Saibo in the background, a little button indicating the roaring action of this Allosaurus, and then you've got an indicator for where the button is so that you can try this dinosaur out in the store. And then we come back to the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom logo there. The back of the box features yet another diagram of the Allosaurus itself, very different from the actual product. As you notice, there's not the yellow specks um, featured throughout the paint job here. But uh, once again, you've got the Jurassic World logo next to the Allosaurus. Um, and if we move down, you can see that the batteries are included on this dinosaur. Um, so that's nice. You don't have to worry about buying the batteries. And then you've got the other dinosaurs available in the Wave 1 of the Roarvors, the Triceratops, Baryonyx, and Metriacanthosaurus. Here you can see the diagram and a little instructional area of push button for sound and chopping action. And the top right corner reminds you to get the Jurassic World Facts app so that you can scan the dinosaur's foot and get in on the digital action of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Alright, now that's enough hullabaloo about the overall appearance of the box. I say it's time we crack this Allosaurus out of the packaging. Now I find that the easiest way to do this, I know I finally got it down to a system after four of these things, is still cutting all the tape up the side and um, the top here, um, and then sliding out the uh, sort of separate piece from the cardboard inside. And that allows you to do this in the most efficient and cleanest way uh, possible. Um, and yes, like all of Mattel's Roarvors, it is unfortunately a one-and-done packaging situation, meaning that once you, uh, put the dinosaur together, there is no feasible way that it can go back into its packaging. You can't put it back in the box. The tail does not come out and there's not enough room. And then the plastic bands that you have to snip in order to get to the dinosaur certainly do not help. So if I slide this out here, one piece at a time, there we go, so you can see there's all that. Now for this, uh, the worst part, uh, <laughs> oh, it always sucks to do that. Uh, and then we come to the back, we undo the tape here, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe baby, come on you, there we go, so we undo that tape. Le releasing those plastic tabs and we oop, bump my mic not sure how much that picked up uh, now we can slide that through and then if we undo this tape here and uh, this tape here that will allow us to remove the plastic part so that way we can get to the tail and instructions without tearing up the uh, backdrop oh it looks like we got uh, one more here maybe oh, they don't ever make it easy do they darn you Mattel there we go 
So now the Allosaurus is free, and as you can see, she is missing something important, something that will not allow her to stand. But we can simply slide that loose now. We've got one more plastic thing to cut. And now it's all free, the background remains completely undamaged, and as I've said in other videos, can be kept kind of as a display mount for your dinosaurs, kind of give you an image from the film. And then we have her tail. We also have instructions here, they're pretty, I mean the toy is very self-explanatory, but it just kind of tells you how to install the tail, how to activate the sound, how to repair the batteries, and then it shows you the pieces that are included. So, you know, pretty simple, straightforward stuff, but in case you need instructions, oh, and there goes my light, uh, they're in there for you. So, here is our Allosaurus, and I think it's time we gave her a hand, or should I say a tail. And as with all of the Roarvors, that just clicks right into place there, and there is no going back now. So, without further ado, there is the Allosaurus, free of the uh, cardboard prison at long last, and standing in all of her glory. Um, and I think it's time we give you guys a closer look at this model. So if we start our review by taking a look at this head, as you can see, you have got very subtle texturing on the upper jaw there, and then the lower jaw features scales of varying sizes and uh, a scratch, um, which is very interesting. Uh, the mouth is in that permanently open position, and the big thing that I noticed about this Allosaurus is the fact that those teeth are not as cleanly sculpted as in the other Roarivore dinosaurs. They're kind of lumped together, all mushy, mush, they don't really have a lot of space in between them and they kind of look big and cartoony like they don't quite fit in that mouth which is a very big bother to me you've also got the signature allosaurus crest over the eye as you can see um, and the eye is seated really nicely it's done in a yellow color with a black pupil and it's got a nice gloss to it to give it a nice uh, sheen um, and once again on the other side you can see all of the scars that were sculpted into the face the sculpture in the mouth features a palette and the tongue, both of which have been painted a sort of very dark blue, which is a very interesting choice. Kind of reminds me of a polar bear. Maybe I'm alone in that, but uh, that's the vibe that I get from it. And then the cheek flaps have been painted on this model, a nice pink color. Lovely to see that they went the extra step with that. And really, that's all there is to the head of this Allosaurus. Kind of a mixed bag on this one. If we move down the length of the body, the neck is probably the best area of sculptural detail um, present on this model, um, just for all the wrinkles and striations that they sculpted. And then you've also got pulling tendons as the neck cranes slightly upwards. Once we get to the midsection, you see more lovely wrinkles down around the shoulder blade area and a lovely fold of skin just above the sweat well of the gut, and then the ribs are very well defined on this Allosaurus, leading me to believe that it is one of the dinosaurs that has not been doing too well for itself in the absence of humans and caretakers on Isla Nublar. Um, really, there isn't much to the sculpture of the torso, it's really just kind of subtle texturing, but once you hit the thighs and the tail, we go back to pebble scalings, which are very well defined, very clear, very cleanly sculpted in and you've also got scars in various areas of, of this allosaurus um which i think is pretty neat um and the texturing as you can see continues all the way down to the tip of the tail if we move back up the other side it's really the same story pebble scales on the tail giving way to skin forms in the midsection scars all over the place on this allosaurus uh leading me to believe that it has been in a lot of scuffles probably for food and it has lost those battles because it is so thin and emaciated uh but but god bless her for trying she she certainly bears the scars of a lot of battles the arms on this uh, allosaurus are incredibly well muscled i mean just look at all the definition in the bicep and tricep area this is one jacked allosaurus and the pack of the hand claws feature some lovely plate, plate scales and unfortunately they are not painted once again really wish they went the extra mile and did that however the toe claws on the feet are painted a nice sleek black cover you've got more lovely plate scales going up the back of the toes and then the musculature in the calves and thighs is very well defined as if the muscles are tensing up as the creature prepares to take a step forward um i think the toes feel a little long on this allosaurus you know um just kind of looking at them they feel awkwardly um sculpted but if we move along the underbelly you can see uh lovely wrinkles musculature in the lower jaw 
very subtle scaling going on under here, and then we get to that, whew, that speaker system, uh, you know, not only is this uh, Allosaurus all scarred up, she's also suffering from leprosy. Uh, the back right foot, or excuse me, yeah, the right foot features the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom emblem, which has been moved from the thigh down to the bottom of the foot. We'll give you a better look at that there. You know, they used to say in the trailers, look for the mark of Jurassic Park. Well, you can't really do that here. Uh, and then we've got the QR code. So if you'd like to scan that into your phone, now is your chance. Get a good look. Pause the video. Go for it. So, now is the time to display this Allosaurus's action gimmick, and like all Roarvors, it's got a push button here located just above the hip, and that, of course, triggers the jaw here to snap shut and causes a roar. I'm gonna adjust my lighting here. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably as good. Oops, that's as good as we're gonna get. So, um, uh, yeah, that's that's really the same action feature as all of the other Roarvors. So, Allosaurus, do you have anything to say to our viewers today? Very well said. Any anything else on that? Okay. Well, uh, that was a little odd. Any anything else to contribute? Okay. I understand you're very passionate on the matter. Thank you for your time today. Do you have any parting words for our viewers? Oh, thank you. That's uh, that's a very nice. Okay, yeah, this, this interview is over. This, the interview is over. Thank you for your time today. Yeah, so you have got about four different sounds, three of which are original to the species, and then one of which is, of course, the T-Rex roar that somehow gets mixed into every single one of these dinosaurs. Um, but, hey, at least it's not like the Baryonyx. Now, articulation on this Allosaurus is pretty much what we've seen. You can move the arms outward, so you got this kind of cliched rawr pose, you know, kind of like the dinosaurs do. They go forward, backwards, in and out on both sides. Nice fluid movement there. The back legs can be moved out. My joint is a little loose on this um, uh, left leg here, or excuse me, the right leg, but they do go forward and backwards. They kind of have their lock-in positions, and of course, the jaw can be triggered to open and close. Now, um, I might as well talk about some of the issues that I have with this model, and I'm going to do that here, but real quick, let's discuss the paint job, because that is one of the first issues I have. As you can see, it is molded in this gray plastic with this sort of yellow uh, patterning going across the top, almost like a cuttlefish or leopard frog, and it continues all the way down to almost the tip of the tail. What a concept! And it's also present on the front of the legs and the back of the calf there. Um, so I do like all of the intricacies in this sort of patterning that they chose. I'm just not a huge fan of the colors themselves. I feel like they clash, they don't really um, flow that well together. I mean, I don't know how accurate it is to the uh, Allosaurus we see in the movie. I'm just not a huge fan of the colors on this toy. You know, you know, sue me, I guess. Another issue that I have is definitely the proportions overall. I mean, just look how thick this midsection is and just how quickly the tail thins out into almost nothingness. I feel like it should be at least a little bit longer and definitely a little thicker starting at the trunk at the base there and then just kind of tapering off to the end of the tail. It just feels way too thin at the base there. Um, I mean, if you pose her in the right way, I guess it's okay. I mean, there's nothing awful about that look, but you know. Another issue I have is the boxiness of the skull. It is just so square in its appearance. It doesn't look like a sleek, uh, the sleek jaws of a predator. It looks like a box art sculpture kind of thing. I don't know. I guess I'm not a huge expert on Allosaurus skull shapes, but this this just doesn't feel right. It feels clunky and awkward, but again, display her from the side, it's okay. Now, for the overall size of this Allosaurus, she is about the same size as all the Roarvors, but uh, if we get an exact measurement, you're looking at right around just past 12 inches long, just under 13 inches from the tip of the snout all the way to the front of the tail, and if we pose her in a way that she's standing back on her tail, the full height you're looking at is just past 7 inches off the ground, roughly 7 and a quarter inches, so yeah, pretty in scale with the uh, rest of the Roarvors. We're going to do a size comparison for you here. We went ahead and brought in all of the other Roarvors from from wave one and as you can see um, they all look very great together now the magic question which one should I get killer shrew fan 
Honestly, I would recommend either the Baryonyx or the Triceratops for the first because this Metriacanthosaurus is up for a re-review because her center of gravity, as you saw there, pushes her to the left and her leg is not there to brace it, so she has a tendency to fall very easily. And then, of course, I have my issues with the Allosaurus. So go for the Baryonyx, then the Triceratops, and then pick one from there. Now, I know I usually bring in Carnage, but today I have to bring in the uh, Action Attack Stegosaurus. I mean, I have to do this one because this is the pairing, you know? Outside of T-Rex and Triceratops, Allosaurus and Stegosaurus are the dinosaurs that get put together, and I think these ones actually look very play compatible, and I can see kids having a lot of fun with these. Of course, the Allosaurus is uh, gonna have to deal with the uh, business end of the Stegosaurus there, and uh, yeah. I don't know if she's gonna win that. Of course, we've got our good buddy Chris Pratt, who has probably been in safer places um, uh, than he has been in this review. I'm very sorry, Chris Pratt, but uh, this Allosaurus is pretty, pretty malnourished, and she's gonna go for just about anything. Now, the cool thing about the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy line is that the dinosaurs are all supposedly in scale with these three and a qu uh, three quarter inch minifigures of the humans. So that should give you a, a good idea of the size there. Well, everyone, that is going to do it for our look at the new for 2018 Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Allosaurus from their Roarivore lineup. Overall, as I've said before, I do have issues with this model. Um, sculpturally speaking, paint job speaking, every there are a few things that just kind of bug me about it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is not bad. I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Has er, Hasbro's best is way below Mattel's worst. And this isn't Mattel's worst, I guess, but it's not their best and it's still way above whatever Hasbro ever did. That being said, if you ask me who done it better, Ken or Mattel or Hasbro, this is one of the few times where Hasbro takes the cake. I don't even have, I don't own either Kenner or Hasbro's Allosaurus, but I don't have to own Hasbro's Allosaurus um, to know that it is the best Allosaurus toy ever made for a Jurassic film. Um, you know, and if they had just given us stuff like they had given us for that, like with that Allosaurus or Pachyrhinosaurus, if they had done that for Jurassic World, we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation. We wouldn't be reviewing Mattel dinosaurs. We would probably still be reviewing Hasbro dinosaurs. Well, that is going to do it for our look today. I want to know all of your thoughts on the Allosaurus. Do you agree with me? Disagree? Let me know everything down in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. really means a lot, and that's all for us today. Thanks again, and Killer Shrew Fan out.